Hey guys, Mr. Myers is here. In this video, I'm going to talk about polar area, finding the area in a polar curve or finding the area between two polar curves. So we're going to use symmetry a lot here. So hopefully, you know, I'm going to grab these really quick. Up here, I have the equation for polar area, and it's basically the uh, think that we're 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 taking and we're cutting out uh, sectors of this like circle thing here, right? And so the area of a sector, pi r, you know, is r squared, right? Um, so we're basically cutting out little sectors, and we're going to add up all those little little area sectors. So we're actually going out from r, and you'll see what I mean in just a second. It's a little different than when we were talking about rectangles. We're, we were cutting out rectangles and rectangular coordinates. Now we're cutting out little um, like little arc sectors. So this is our polar area, and the polar area comes is the coming out from the origin out to the radius. You'll see what I mean in just a second, okay? So one half alpha to beta, and those are just angles. So my first angle to my second angle, and we're going around and counterclockwise, times r squared. R is going to be our 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 r r our polar function d theta. The nice thing about these is that you will need your calculator because you're most most likely pretty much always going to be doing this in a calculator to find your actual answer for your integral. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and graph this guy. Find the area of one petal of the curve of r equals 3 cosine 3 theta. So if you graphed it, it looks something like this. Like this. Sorry about that. It would look something like this. And so I'm trying to find the area of this pedal. Now, notice that this pedal, you know, it's symmetric about the x-axis here. And so we can use symmetry and just find this area, and then we'll multiply it by 2. All right, so what angle does this start at? This starts right here. So again, you didn't watch me graph this, but uh, when I graph this curve, when I plug in theta equals zero, this gives me cosine of zero, which is one. One times three is three. So I'm actually going to start here and then go towards, oops, that's a little bit too big. And then I'm going to end up going towards the origin. So it helps to know where you're going to start here. All right, so this actually starts out here at zero. And then it, it goes out this way and out this way and out this way and then comes back around. So it goes from 0 to pi over 2, right? Well, does it? Is it 0 over pi, to pi over 2? What makes this 0? Really, we want to know kind of where is that tangent. So the easiest way to figure out what makes the radius 0 is just by plugging in 0 for r. So 0 equals 3 cosine 3 theta. And we'll solve for theta. So 3 theta will equal pi over 2. So theta, in this case, is pi over 6. So really, right here is pi over 6. So we're going to have, we're going to set up our integral. The area equals, remember, we're only doing the half of this area, right? We're only going from here to here. So we're doing, hold on, let me, so we're, we're going to find this area here, which is 1 half, um, 0 to pi over 6, 3 cosine of 3 theta squared d theta so that I used our polar area formula that I just posted up there so this right here that I have gives me the area that I have shaded well I don't want just that shaded I want one whole petal so I'm gonna multiply this guy by 2 using symmetry alright so now I have the whole thing and I'm going to go and plug this guy in my calculator. Now, I can plug it in my calculator, the TI Inspire will do this for you. You just use the little integral symbol there for the TI Inspire, um, like we've done in the past. If you're using a TI-84, then you're doing like uh, FN Int, I think it is. Um, but you could just plug this guy straight into the TI Inspire. It'll pop it out for you, and you'll get 2.356. Make sure that you are in radian mode, all right? All right, let's take a look at... So now we're going to end up going into how do we find the area between two polar graphs. In order to find the area, if you remember finding the area between two curves, we need to find the intersection. So we, you know, it behooves us to find the intersection of, of these points. So r equals 1 is a circle. And then uh, r equals 1 minus 2 cosine theta. If I graph that out, 
that's going to, let's see, I'm going to put 0 in here. 0 is going to give me 1. Um, that's going to give me negative 1. So that's going to actually start right here. And it's going to go back like this, out to 3, back like this. Okay, so it's a lima sum with an inner loop, something like that. And here are intersections, right here, right here, and right there. So I'm going to go ahead and solve that. And the way I do that is I just set them equal to each other. All right. So then I solve this equation for theta. And I get theta equals pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. So my points, and you're probably saying, well, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 is just right here. Well, yeah, but we can tell what point that is, right? So my points here are 1 comma pi over 2. And I can figure that out. It's right here. What I could do, too, is that if you want, you just take that in, put it in there. But we already know r is 1, so that's where I get the 1 right there, okay? And 1, 3 pi over 2. And there is one more, so we don't want to forget that. All right, so what is that point? Um, you can just say this is 1 comma pi, or you can say negative comma negative 1 comma 0, uh, whatever you want. But there are three points, okay? So these are the points of intersection. All right, so let's apply that to finding the area between two curves. Now, polar area between two curves, you got to remember that we are trying to find the area as it goes, shoots out from the origin. All right, so I'm going to draw these two guys here real quick. Um, and again, it's always helpful to know uh, where I'm starting from. So we'll start with uh, a negative 6 cosine theta. Negative 6 cosine theta, if I put 0 in for theta, 0 in for theta is going to give me, uh, 0 is going to give me 1. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. So that's right here, right? So this is where I'm starting. And I actually end up um, with a pretty big circle. And, and, and I know it's like it looks like an ellipse because you know it's got to go up. The scale is kind of weird. Okay. Um, so it's not drawn to scale. That's why it's kind of funky like that. Um, then I also have 2 minus 2 cosine theta. And if I start at 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So 2 minus 2 is 0, right? So I'm actually going to start here. I'm starting at 0, 0. And this one, if I if I draw this out, all right? So if I if I draw this guy out, it's going to look, it's going to be a limit sum like this. All right. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for the area that's right here, all this area right here. Okay, between the two curves. So this one's a little tricky because like we did in, in between two curves in uh, with rectangular coordinates, we would take like we would take r uh, a big big radius minus a small radius, right? Well, we can do we can do big radius minus a small radius if we were talking about the outside area. So if we were looking at this area here, the area between the two curves, we would do you know, we would be shooting out really far to this big radius, and we would also be shooting out to this little radius, and we would subtract them. So we would do like one half um, big R squared minus little r squared d theta in this case. Now, that's if we were doing this part, but we're not doing that part. We're actually doing, we're doing the other stuff in here, right? So we're not going to do that. We're going to have to do something different. So notice here that from zero, I, I'm, I'm shooting out, I don't know if you can see this, I'll zoom in real close here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm, I'm shooting out like this, all right? This is what I want to end up doing. This is like, like how my radi radiuses are going to end up going. Okay, so I'm going to keep going like this, like this, like this, like this, like that. Notice that there's like this little piece in here. I'm going to try to make it from here and here. There's this little piece that really doesn't involve the green part. It's just the, uh, just the blue circle. So that one is going to be its own integral. So I'm going to go ahead and integrate from here 
to the intersection there of just the blue part, all right? So this starts, okay, so again, we, this started at zero right here, right? So I don't want to start at zero. I actually want to start at pi over two because I know that this is going to go to pi over two like this. So for the blue, for the blue circle, it goes pi over two is here and then I'm curving around. Okay. So this is what the formula is going to look like for the blue circle. So for the blue circle, okay, time out. Before I go there, um, I need to find these intersection points. I need to find where this is and this is. Okay. So to do that, we're going to go and set six cosine theta equal to two minus two cosine theta. And we're going to go and solve for theta. All right. Okay, so we're going to have this little blue area, right? The little the little dark black spot there. So I'm just going to do the top part there. So I'm going to do 2 times 1 half because I'm going to do it twice, right? Because there's I'm doing the whole thing. So i got to multiply by 2 because there's I'm using symmetry. I'm going to go from pi over 2 to 2 pi over 3 because that's where it intersects right here. So I'm going from, from this to this, all right? And I'm going to have um, negative 6 cosine theta squared d theta and then I'm gonna have to add the rest of it so I'm gonna go ahead and use green here come on green um, I'm gonna add the rest of it notice the rest of the area the radius is just go out to the green function so I'm gonna go now I'm gonna go two times one half because I'm gonna use symmetry again from two pi over three now right here to two from two pi over three all the way it looks like to pi And I'm going to use 2 minus 2 cosine theta squared d theta. Let me move this around here so you can see it if I'm in your way. All right. And so that's what we're going to get. We're going to go ahead and enter that in our calculator. So we're just going to end that, enter that whole bad boy in our calculator. And it's going to give us 15.708. All right. Let's look at the last one here. To find the area between the loops of 2 equal of uh, 2 times 1 plus 2 sine theta. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this. All right. So what I'm trying to do is find the area that's all outside right here, all out here. So I'm going to do is I'm going to find the area of the basically I'm going to go, I'm going to do symmetry again. So I'm going to just do this half. I'm going to find the area of the outside part or well the whole part, right? So actually I'm going to start up here at pi over 2. All right. If I plug pi over 2 in there I get 6. Um, so I'm going to start at pi over 2. I'm going to go all the way out. So I'm going to make these little radiuses going out like this. All the way till I get to 0, to the radius of 0. So I need to know what radius or what angle that's going to be. Um, that's going to give me a radius of 0. And then I'm going to do the other part, which is the inner loop part. So then I'm going to continue and go to the inner loop right here. And then I will subtract those. All right. So the first thing we need to do is find the uh, zero, that angle that we're going to have to go to. So what we'll do is we'll just go and plug this and set this equal to zero. And we'll solve this. Okay, so I solved it here. And notice I drew the angles here so we can see it. So the area here is going to be, now I'm going to just do this first half. So that's going to go, um, that's going to go from pi over 2 to 7 pi over 6 of 2 times 1 plus 2 sine theta squared oops like that d theta now i did half of, i have to put the half here so i did i did only half thing i'm going to get the whole thing right so i'm going to multiply this by two because i'm using symmetry and i'm going to subtract that from the blue part and the blue part oops that's going to be two times a half again using symmetry the blue part is going to go from 7 pi over 6 to 3 pi over 2. Okay, because I'm going right here and then going out like that. And that's going to be of 2 times 1 plus 2 sine theta squared d theta. All right, then I put this bad boy in the calculator. Boom, boom, in my calculator, and it's going to give me 33.351. All right, so... There you go, guys. Area of polar graphs.